Hi everyone, welcome back to Quantify Your Career. And today, let's talk about some of the most used and must know models in quantitative finance. So before we dive into what, what are these quantitative models, let's see why are these models even needed? So in this complex and dynamic world of quant finance, these models serve several critical purposes. The main is objective decision-making. So they reduce reliance on subjective judgment by providing systematic approaches to investment and risk management. This is even useful so you can justify your decision-making objectively. Some of these examples are risk assessment, models like value at risk and Monte Carlo simulations. They help in quantifying potential losses and even understanding risk exposures. Asset pricing, so models like black scholes morton framework, they assist in determining fair values for financial derivatives. They are used in portfolio optimization, so techniques like mean variance optimization, they enable investors to construct portfolios and balance expected returns against risk. And market analysis uses time series models like ARIMA and GARCH. They are employed to forecast market trends and volatility. So in this video, what I've done is I've structured these models into categories or buckets. So it's easier for you to relate to where these models might be used. There might be overlap between these categories, but there are many considerations before using these models, which we will come to later. So here I have bucketed all of these well-known models into seven categories. Now these categories might overlap for these models. For example, one model might be used in two of these categories, but this might provide a framework for you to start learning each of these models. Let's start with some derivatives pricing models. And these are the most common option pricing models, which I have listed here, starting with binomial option pricing model. Now, this is a discrete time model that evaluates options by simulating possible price paths of the underlying asset over time. So it kind of constructs a binomial tree to represent different possible paths the asset price can take, allowing for valuation of American options, which can be exercised before expiration. Then is the Black-Scholes model. This is a continuous time model that provides a closed form solution for pricing European options. It assumes constant volatility and interest rates and that the underlying asset follows a log normal distribution. So these were some of the assumptions which I was talking about earlier that we have to consider for each model, the data, the underlying assumptions, which might affect the model. By choosing or deciding a model, we need to keep these things in mind. One of the other common models is the Merton Jump Diffusion model. This is an extension of the Black-Scholes model that incorporates sudden discrete jumps in asset prices. So it captures events like earnings announcements, economic news, and this model combines continuous diffusion with a jump process to better reflect real market behaviors. Next, let's come to time series and econometric models. The most common one which is used is ARIMA. This is a combination of two models, which is autoregressive and moving average, the AR model and MA model. So ARIMA is a statistical model used for analyzing and forecasting time series data by combining autoregression Differencing, and this differencing is used to achieve stationarity, and it combines moving averages. And it is particularly effective for short-term forecasting. The other common model is the vector autoregression model, or VAR. This is a multivariate time series model that captures the linear interdependencies among multiple time series. So each variable in the system is modeled as a function of its own lagged values and lagged values of other variables. The third common model in this category is co-integration. So this is a more of a statistical property which indicates a long-term equilibrium relationship between two or more non-stationary time series variables. Now, when I'm mentioning all of these words like stationary, non-stationary, when you actually go deep into these models, you, will, you should be learning all these processes and nomenclature behind them. This is all related to the data which is going to be underlying for, the, for these models. So coming back to co-integration, even if individual series are non-stationary, their linear combination can be stationary. That implies a stable relationship over time. 
I have subdivided this category into two categories. One is asset pricing and the other is portfolio optimization. So within the asset pricing, and this all comes under portfolio theory, that's why I have categorized it into one. So within asset pricing, let's look at the, the most famous CAPM model, which is capital asset pricing model. This estimates the expected return of an asset based on its systematic risk, that is beta, the risk-free rate, and the expected market return. So this assumes that investors are compensated only for the systematic risk. Arbitrage pricing theory, this is a multi-factor model that explains asset returns through various macroeconomic factors. So this allows more flexibility than CAPM by not relying on a market portfolio. And one of the other most common models is the Pharma French three or five factor model. So this is an extension of CAPM, which includes size and value factors, that is small versus large companies and high versus low book to market ratios to better explain asset returns. So while learning this model, you can also replicate the research paper, the original research paper by Pharma French. This will give you a good idea on what, how the model works and what kind of data fits into this model. The portfolio optimization part has two very famous models, which is the Markowitz mean variance optimization model. This is a portfolio construction technique that aims to optimize the trade-off between expected return and risk, leading to the efficient frontier of optimal portfolios. And then there's Black Letterman model, which combines the equilibrium market returns with investor views to produce a more stable and intuitive set of expected returns. And this can be used in the mean variance optimization. Now let's get an overview of the risk models. So Monte Carlo simulation is a method that uses random sampling to model the probability of different outcomes in a process that is difficult to predict analytically. So it's widely used in finance for either pricing complex derivatives, simulating portfolio risk under various market scenarios. And this technique allows practitioners to estimate expected values distributions and risk measures by generating thousands of hypothetical future paths. So this is one of the models which I have categorized under risk models but can be categorized within derivatives pricing or any other asset class pricing. Then is value at risk. So value at risk estimates the maximum potential loss of a portfolio over a specific time horizon at a given confidence level. For example, at 95% confidence, what is the maximum loss that a portfolio can occur in a certain time period? So it provides a threshold value such that the probability of a loss exceeding this amount is very small. Though it is popular for summarizing risk, it doesn't convey how severe the losses are beyond this threshold value. So that's where expected shortfall comes into picture. And it's also known as conditional value at risk and it measures the average loss in the worst case scenarios that exceed this VAR threshold. It is more robust and a coherent risk measure than VAR because it captures the tail risk. So regulators and risk managers increasingly prefer this for evaluating potential extreme losses in portfolios. Let's get an overview of the credit risk models now. For example, the modern structural model, it models a firm's equity as a call option on its assets with default occurring if the asset value falls below the debt value at maturity. And it is foundational in structural credit risk modeling. Whereas credit metrics is a portfolio credit risk model, it was developed by JP Morgan, that estimates the distribution of potential losses due to the credit events. And it considers rating migrations and default correlations. And these copula models like Gaussian copula, T copula, they describe the dependence structure between random variables. Now within fixed income, let's look at the interest rate models and term structure models. So interest rate models are mathematical frameworks used to predict the evolution of interest rates and then price fixed income securities. Term structure models specially focus on modeling the relationship between interest rates and their maturities. So now within interest rate models, you have equilibrium models and arbitrage free or no arbitrage models. So within equilibrium models, 
which are derived from economic theory, and they assume that rates return or revert to a long-term mean. Vasicek and CIR fall under that category. And arbitrage-free or no arbitrage models include the Hull-White model and the Holy model. So coming to Vasicek, just an overview. It is an interest rate model that assumes mean reversion and normally distributed interest rates, leading to the possibility of negative rates. CIR or Cox Ingersoll Ross model it is an extension of the Vasicek model that ensures positive interest rates by modeling them as a square root diffusion process. Arbitrage free models are calibrated to fit the current market data, for example, the yield curves. The Hull White model is a factor model that extends the Vasicek model by allowing time dependent factors providing a better fit to the initial term structure. Forward rate models model the entire forward rate curve rather than the short rate. So the HJM framework, it focuses on the stochastic evolution of forward rates. And the key feature is that it ensures no arbitrage by linking drift and volatility. So it is a model for the evolution of interest rates that directly models the forward rate curve and it allows for consistent modeling of the entire yield curve over time. That's the heath jaro morton framework. And the LMM, LIBOR market model, it's also known as the BGM model. It models the evolution of forward LIBOR rates and ensures consistency with the initial term structure and capturing the dynamics of interest rates. And it's used for pricing caps or swaptions. The advantage is it, it is directly it directly uses observable market rates. There are other term structure models which fall under the category of a fine term structure, and within that, Vasicek and CIR also fit into. Credit spread models just analyze the difference in yield between corporate bonds and risk-free government bonds, attributing the spread to credit risk and other factors. Lastly, mortgage-backed securities pricing models. They involve complex simulations to account for prepayment risk, interest rate changes, and even default probabilities. So models like Monte Carlo simulations are often used to price an MBS accurately. Now within volatility models, if you see Arch and Garch, the auto-regressive conditional heteroscedasticity model and its extension, generalized Arch, are used to model time-varying volatility in financial time series. So they capture volatility clustering by allowing current variance to depend on the past squared returns and past variances. These models are heavily used within option pricing or derivatives pricing models. SABR or stochastic alpha beta rho model is a stochastic volatility model that captures the volatility smile in derivatives markets, particularly for interest rate derivatives. It models the forward rate with stochastic volatility incorporating parameters which are alpha for volatility, beta for elasticity, and rho for correlation. The Heston model is a stochastic volatility model used for option pricing, assuming that volatility follows a mean reverting square root process. It accounts for the observed volatility smile in markets by allowing volatility to be random and correlated with asset returns. The SVJ model combines stochastic volatility with sudden jumps in asset prices. So it captures both continuous market fluctuations as well as abrupt movements. It is useful for pricing options and managing risk in markets prone to sudden shocks. And finally, the local volatility models assume that volatility is a deterministic function of the current asset price and time. And so it allows for exact calibration to observed market prices of vanilla options. So these are particularly used for pricing exotic options. Machine learning, deep learning models, or AI in general can be subdivided into these categories, like supervised learning, which involves training algorithms on labeled data sets to predict outcomes. So for example, like credit scoring or fraud detection falls into this category. And in finance, it, it's widely used for risk assessment and algo trading strategies. Unsupervised learning deals with unlabeled data, aiming to uncover hidden patterns or groupings. So techniques like clustering and dimensionality reduction are applied in customer segmentation and even anomaly detection. Reinforcement learning involves an agent learning to make decisions by interacting with an environment to maximize the cumulative rewards. 
and it's applied in developing trading algos that adapt to market dynamics. Finally, generative AI refers to models that can generate new data samples like text or images resembling the training data. And in finance, it can be used for automating report generation, scenario analysis, and even creating synthetic data for modeling. Now let's discuss some of the considerations before you use these quant models. Now before implementing any quantitative model, it is essential to evaluate some important aspects. For example, the model assumptions, understand the underlying assumptions, for example, normality of returns, market efficiency, and assess their validity in the current context. Then you should consider data quality. Ensure the availability of accurate and relevant data because poor data can lead to misleading results. So the model is as good as your data is. And then is model complexity versus interpretability. So there should be some balance of sophistication of the model with the ability to interpret and explain its outputs. So sometimes very complex models cannot, they're not the right models to use. Sometimes simplistic models actually do the work better. Overfitting risk. So be cautious of models that fit historic data too closely, as they may not generalize well to future scenarios. And lastly, regulatory and ethical implications. So you should consider compliance with financial regulations and ethical use of models, especially in areas like credit scoring and algo trading. Lastly, how to decide which model to use. Now, selecting the appropriate model depends on various factors. One is objective of analysis. So you define whether the goal is pricing or risk assessment, forecasting, or portfolio construction. You can use multiple models, but using the correct model for each goal is important. Then is nature of the financial instrument, whether it's an option or a bond or equity, some may require specialized models. So structured products may, may require a combination of a lot of models. Then is market conditions. In volatile uncertain markets, models that account for jumps or stochastic volatility like Heston or Merton models, they may be more appropriate. Data availability, so the choice of model is often constrained by the type and amount of data which is available. And lastly, computational resources. So complex models may require significant computational power. This influences the feasibility of their use. So in practice, model selection involves a trade-off between accuracy, complexity, and practicality. It is often beneficial to compare multiple models and validate their performance using out-of-sample testing or cross-validation techniques. So you can use evaluate these models using metrics and then decide whether that model fits your need. So I hope you found this helpful and let me know if you have any questions. Until next time.